Welcome back, my friends. I'm Gene Della Sala, president of Audioholics. Hey guys, I figured it would be about time that we do a video on base management the way most people are gonna configure their systems. Because a lot of times we've done videos on base management where we talked about specific circumstances where you have large speakers and you have a subwoofer to integrate with. Well, this time I'm gonna take a Yamaha receiver. I actually have an RX Z7. It's the last RX Z series that Yamaha made, the last receiver with the amber front panel display, which I love. I wish Yamaha would bring back. So I'm gonna basically show you guys how to set up bass management with all your speakers small, with multiple subwoofers, and really guys, 90 to 95% of home theater installations should be set up this way. That's why I think it's so important that I give you this little tutorial using a Yamaha receiver. So let's get on the screen and let me show you what's up. Okay guys, so we're here on the on-screen display of the Yamaha RX Z7. Hit the menu button. And you can see we have all our different options here. And what I would do is I'd go to setup, go to speaker, and most of the receivers operate similar fashion, guys. Configuration, so you select your front channels. You can see I have it set small at 80 hertz. You could change that to large if you have large speakers. You could change it to small, which is what we're focusing on today. 80 hertz is the crossover for the main speakers. What that means, guys, is bass below 80 hertz now will be routed to the subwoofer at 24 dB per octave to the sub, and they'll be rolled off at the main speakers at 12 dB per octave. So that gives you a really good integration between the subwoofer and the satellite speaker. Next, we go to the center channel. The same thing, guys. I have a center channel that has dual six and a half inch uh, woofers and a tweeter. Best to run it as small. Best to keep the crossover the same as the main speakers. Now we got our surround channels. Again, small woofers in it. Run it small, 80 hertz. Now my surround backs actually have in-wall speakers. They have less bass capability than my other speakers. I ran it an extra 10 hertz higher simply because I had the ability to do so. This Yamaha receiver has independent crossover settings per channel group. Don't sweat it if it doesn't, just leave it at 80 hertz. Don't lose sleep, trust me, it's not worth it. Uh, front presence, we're not running front presence speakers. Now subwoofer, of course, if you go to run your speakers on small with a crossover, you need a subwoofer plugged into the subwoofer channel. So in my case, I have it set for normal. You could actually reverse the phase on the subwoofer channel, but I wouldn't do that unless you have a way to check if it actually makes it better. You could do that with an SPL meter and some test tones, and you could go to your seated position, and you could run it on normal and reverse and see if the levels go up or down, depending on which way you have it. And go with the louder setting is usually the right setting. Um, I like to make measurements. I use my... Um, OmniMic and I use you know my measurement software that we always talk about and um, you find the best integration that way now base out is that thing I was telling you about before you could actually run your towers large and have the base go into your towers not the LFE but the large towers can have base then you could copy that base over to your sub we're not doing that in this case because all of our speakers are set small we're running just subwoofer so I'm not setting it front plus sub. I recommend just leaving it on subwoofer, okay? So that takes care of the base management. Then you've got your distance. Now you could use your automatic setup with the microphone. It's really good at nailing distances. Or you could do like I do, I'm kind of old school. I bring out the tape measure and I physically measure the distance from each speaker to the seating area, to the money seat. So you can see we've got control of that in uh, 0.1 foot increments. That's a really good, um, product when you have it. Some of the cheaper products only give you one foot adjustments. The better Yamaha and Denon's will give you uh, within a tenth of a foot resolution. And you see all the channels are here. Now for the subwoofer distance, that's a little dicey. You don't always go with the actual physical distance. Um, a lot of it depends on if the subwoofer has its own DSP processing in it, which will add delay or if you're running multiple subs off of one subwoofer output, which is this case, this Yamaha receiver only has one subwoofer output. I'm running two subwoofers in the room. I'm running them in diagonal corners. And I just happen to find using my measurement system that setting my distance 16 feet, even though my subwoofers are only about eight to 10 feet away from my seated area, 
gave me the best integration with my main speakers at my two primary money seats in the room. So this really depends if you have the tools, the right tools for the right job, as Scotty used to say. Now you get the levels again, um, use an SPL meter. You could use your auto setup to do the levels. I still like to go in and do it myself afterwards to check it. And I also typically turn the center channel up about a dB, maybe sometimes a dB and a half, because you find a lot of movies, they don't give you enough center dialogue. I always find that I'm struggling to hear the center channel. So it's okay to turn that center channel up a little bit, guys. You don't have to have every channel at the same level. I would experiment and, and adjust to taste. And that's pretty much it for the base management. Um, you know, you've got some other advanced settings. A lot of the stuff I don't use, like this adaptive DRC and adaptive DSP level, a lot of it acts as a compressor. So if you're doing late night listening, you know, movie watching, you don't want to blow your neighbors away or, or piss off your wife or your sleeping children, that's when you start turning these things on. Another thing I think is important is the max volume. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've had people over that don't know audio. And their solution when they don't hear it working is to just keep cranking the volume up until they hear it working. Then they accidentally make it work and it blows your whole system out. So I like putting a limiter on. I set mine at plus 10. There's, I never put this thing on any higher, than, not even close to plus 10. If I'm lucky, I'll get to like minus five or something if I'm really blasting it. I never get this high. I have pretty sensitive speakers. I have a pretty decent sized room and this amplifier is pretty powerful. Another thing is initial volume. I like that too, because you don't want to turn your receiver on and it remembers the last setting and you blow your neighbors or yourself out when you go to put on transformers or something. I like to power it up at a, at a reasonably low level. So there's no surprises the next time you turn your system on, especially if you have kids that play games. You know, they turn up Super Mario Brothers. You go to turn it on thinking you go to watch Bill Maher or something and you're blown out of the water. Don't want that, guys. So just watch it. And then I would go into um, some of the advanced settings when, you, when you're done and just save it, you know, save it into your memory. That way, in case somebody messes with your stuff, you can recall it. And then there is an area where you can actually lock your settings. Memory guard. Go in here. I usually keep mine off because nobody in my house really knows how to get this far into the menus. But if you have kids, and you know they like to mess around with your stuff, turn that on. Now nobody can mess with your channel trims. When you get out of here and you go and accidentally hit the level buttons, oh, memory guard. Keeps you safe and sound. So that's it guys. I mean, I just wanted to show you how to do a basic base management setup with all speakers small. I hope you find this video useful. And until next time, keep listening and listen well.